компании Fisher и производстве лыж, мы обещали подробно поговорить о производстве спортивных лыж. Руководитель отдела исследований и разработок компании Алоис Пибер не только подробно рассказал нам об особенностях создания и производства цеховых лыж, но и показал, как измеряют индекс жесткости лыжи. Если вас интересует, что такое настоящий спортсех и бывает ли он не настоящим, а также на каких лыжах выступают гонщики в Кубке мира, то это видео для вас. So what's the difference between uh, the development and the process when we compare the regular production and the racing production, yeah. so the cycle and so on? There is a huge difference. Uh, you can imagine uh, racing development is a permanently ongoing process. And uh, we are doing the racing development uh, together with our top athletes, which are running in the World Cup uh, scene, like Alexander uh, Rozhinov or Manfred Mölk, or Daniel Jule, or Vince Kriegmeier. So the job is done directly with, together with them, with the service guys and all the others. And when I say it's a permanently ongoing process, means uh, we have uh, some cycles in a year uh, where we do strong developments, which is more or less after the season because when the race stress from the World Cup races and championships or Olympic Games are over, this is uh, one, two months in March, April, uh, where we're making a lot of different tests, a lot of different versions. Then the racers make a break out of physical conditions, they make physical training and vacation, normally until end of June. Uh, now we start uh, with the with uh, the second cycle of development, which is very short, three, four weeks, with ski holes. For example, next week we are on, uh, in uh, France in a ski dome with different versions of slalom skis, and uh, which we already based on the development in March, and uh, <coughs> with some additional ideas. This time is very busy because uh, the results from next week will be spread to 10 other athletes. So we have to build up in two weeks 15, 20 pair of skis. Mm -hmm. uh, then normally the athletes go to the summer training, which is normally in uh, the Southern Hemisphere, like Argentina, Chile or New Zealand. And then they have really three weeks, four weeks, depending on conditions, where they can uh, push really the stuff and find out what is the best setup, what is the things. And what is very important, this is the first comparison with the competitors. Mm -hmm. Because within the teams, uh, what we are doing in springtime is Fisher-based. What we are doing now is Fisher-based. And then we have the first, let's say, approval, yeah. <laughs> honestly speaking, with uh, other brands, because in the Italian team, French team, wherever, uh, Atomic and Head and, uh, and so on. And uh, when we see that we are competitive, which is for sure the target, and uh, it's quite good, uh, but sometimes uh, we have to improve something, so we come to the next cycle, which leads up to the first races, which are in Sölden and Levy normally. And then the development is, I would not say stopped, but the development uh, is going back because the athletes has to concentrate on the races for training and to be successful on the races. For sure, the real proof of is key. If you do it in spring, if you do it in summer training, if you do it in autumn, the real proof is the race itself. Uh, because we have to, to think over two things. One is the material, the second is the shape of the racer. Not only in physical condition, but only in the, in the will to win a race, to go to really to the limit. And in the meantime, the, let's say the performance level of material of racers is that high, that at the final end, when it goes to the limit, you can see if the material is really working or not working. Which leads me, uh, so then in, in winter time, we do some small adjustments and not to disturb too much the concentration of the guys. But this leads me now for the commercialization. Because uh, somewhere in a year, uh, the race director, Sigi Vogelreiter and myself and product management for racing has to decide what kind of this development of these versions we are uh, deciding for production and to go to the general market. And this is uh, normally decided after or before 
within the first races, which means October, November. So in October, November, we summarize everything and we say, okay, for example, for slalom, this kind of model with the number 208.1, which you can find on the ski, which is a stamp, uh, is the construction for next year for the wide field of the Atlas. Uh, the decision is done not uh, because one of the guys has his individual model and where he says the individually the fastest one, we try to summarize what is the, let's say, what is the most common used. Because uh, racers are in the meantime that individual, so I cannot uh, avoid that uh, Manfred Merck or Alexander has a specific model. But out if out from then eight are using the 208.5, for example, then we say this is the model for the market. Mm-hmm. And this model for the market, so we have the World Cup level, and for sure the World Cup level is individual. Yes. But anyway, the experience shows that there is some trend year mm-hmm. by year. And when we decide this, uh, we decided for the next year's production, mm-hmm. not for three years, the next year's next production. Year. And this we decide in two levels, which is the, we call it national level. Mm-hmm. And the national level is produced under the exactly same conditions like the World Cup level, with the same people, with the same presses, with the same structuring and grinding, grinding and uh, with a very high quality aspect, especially with the overall flex. Here we can see, and maybe later on we can uh, check it. We measure the flex distribution, but for the production control, we make we measuring the flex index. For example, if the model, just to say something, 281 has a flex index 54, with the average, this you can find on the ski. This is the national level. But parallel, we do the same changes for the international level. And the international level has the same construction, has the same materials inside. The only difference is that we can, on this big quantity, not focus on that close, let's say, flex index. Which means on the international level, you have to find a wider range. For example, if you make it in racing with the flex 54, you will find in the international a 52, a 54, a 56. And this... Uh, and this is just because of the uh, production process? Yes, this is just because, uh, yes. um, for example, for the national level and for the world Cup level, we preparing for maximum five pairs of skis the material, especially the wood core, because the thickness of the wood core is the main the main issue for the flex index. Mm-hmm. So if the thickness and you have to, with the, uh, with the machines, you have to, to, to mill it, to grind it. And when we're talking about flex 52 to flex 54, for example, in an overall thickness of the core, this means that the core uh, varies in a range of 0.1 to 0.15 millimeters, yeah, which is more or less nothing. Thick, yes. one, one but, point, yeah. One and uh, there is some physical uh, formula behind, but I okay. think it's not the, not the, uh, the place to, to explain this now. Yeah. But believe me, 1.50 1. millimeters makes 52 to 54. So therefore, in the national level, we prepare just for five pairs of skis. We produce the first ski, it is controlled. If the ski is in the range, we produce the five pairs. And after that, the procedure restarts for the next Five pairs yeah, of the and next. And that changes because of the structure of the yes. wood you're using. Yeah. So and different trees gives. Different yeah, different for sure. Yeah, wood is a natural material. If you use peach, uh, peach is yes. not always the same. Yeah. Uh, and the difference to the international level is just that we have bigger tolerances in the wood core. Mm-hmm. Which means if you go to the clients, the side cut is the same, the general behavior is the same. The construction and material is the same. It's just a, a step within the, let's say, the, the precision of the of the process. Okay. Mm-hmm. So then, uh, so you have the same. So for national and international, mm-hmm. everything the same. Yes. The only difference is that for national, you have uh, you more focus on the 
to Preci the precision yes. production of, uh, of yes. this certain uh, certain flex index. Yes, uh, precision of production and the grinding, honestly speaking. Mm -hmm. Because the national level is World Cup uh, finish with people which are only working for this. It's not a big machinery for the international. And keep in mind, uh, if you use these keys, because these keys are for really the high quality racers from World Cup, European Cup, to the high level of FAS racers. Uh, and you have uh, to prepare these keys. Nobody uses it from the shelf. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, nobody is using it for, for out of the box and so on. Yeah. Very and for the Asian International, because we have a lot of clients, which for their use and for their needs, it's not needed this exactness of, of precision because they have anyway not the slopes to do this, to feel this, mm -hmm. because you have always to compare, uh, let's say, FIS prepared slopes, which are smooth, hard, back, flat, where you can feel this. If you go to a natural slope, even a World Cup racer will be hard to, to feel the mm -hmm. difference. Uh, and this keys has to be skied out of the box, mm -hmm. because the client, the uh, normal client, uh, does not like to spend a lot of time and money for finishing preparation and things like this. So this is the only difference. Uh, there is a myth on the on the market that some people say that uh, the diff that the national uh, that uh, the uh, skis of these different levels, some people really think that they have differences in construction. No, no. Yeah, that, but that's definitely not that Fisher. Okay, that's and I guess it's very important to say that mm -hmm. uh, those magic uh, mm -hmm. figures 54, yeah, 52 yeah. is nothing but millimeters actually. Yes, this yes, is, yes. This is is tens of tens of, of millimeters. Uh, да, вот тот самый вот тот самый флекс индекс, те магические 52, 53, 54, которые э, пишутся на лыжи, вокруг которых столько споров. Вот теперь смотрите, как это как это делается и что это значит. Окей, okay, Луис, please explain what is that magic 52 and 54. <laughs> the magic 52 is nothing else than we use uh, as a production control within the model. So 54 with the model 28.5 does not mean the same with 54 in terms of behavior of the model itself, but it's yeah. just a flex index. And it's measured very simple. We have uh, support, the tip and the tail. Uh, we have a certain preload, which is 200 grams. Then we say zero. And yeah. then the ski is flexed with around 15 kilogram. And this ski has a flex of 53 millimeters flex. That's it. Okay. So coming back, go up and go up. And with this we control the production. And as I explained before, with the 0.50 millimeters, we get the flex 52, 54. So the difference to the so the difference between 52 and 54 is just that small level, yeah. less than a less than a millimeter in the wood core. Yeah, yeah, less, much less. Much less yeah. than one millimeter. So I can show you one thing. So 53, and I just touch with my finger. Or maybe we can touch it yeah. from that side. Yeah. So that's very. Yeah, close. that's. Ну это 52 и 53. Я не ощущаю, я не ощущаю на самом деле давление. В чем разница? Вот 50 или 51, да, здесь уже чуть-чуть чувствуется. А вот 53, 52. Спасибо, Алоис, за подробные комментарии и особенно за демонстрацию измерений. С процессом производства цеховых лыж теперь разобрались. Но остался вопрос с лыжами для слалома гиганта. Ведь есть кубковые модели, или если правильно их назвать фисовскими, а есть лыжи мастерс. В чем дело и в чем разница? Об этом поговорим в следующий раз.